Logan Paul destroyed Dylan Danis and humiliated him in the ring. This is after months of mental torture from Dylan Danis exposing Logan Paul's fiance's uh, promiscuous past. So how did Logan control his emotions and get the job done? And how did Dylan not back up one ounce of all the trash talk he did? My name is Bryce Wilson. I'm a mental performance coach, and I'll be giving you a full breakdown of both their mindsets before and during the match. To do this, I watched every pre and post fight interview of both fighters, and here's what I found. I empathize with you, Dylan. Okay. Because I understand that Twitter right now for you is like a group therapy session. Yeah. Because for the first time in a while, you're getting a sense of validation that you have mm. not gotten. I always... A guy as big of a troll as Dylan Danis would get under anyone's skin. And he's not just being a regular troll. He's literally committing a crime by posting private pictures and videos of Logan's fiance daily. But this right here is how Logan's not letting the trolling affect him. He's putting himself in Dylan's shoes to understand him. Anyone who excessively criticizes the life of someone else probably isn't living the best life of their own. Think about the happiest people you know. Are they wasting their energy criticizing and being mean to others? No, it's typically the people who live the most miserable lives or are going through a tough period in their life who are the most mean to others. Logan understands this and understands that for Dylan to enjoy breaking up a loving relationship by attacking an innocent bystander and his opponent's fiance, he must be going through a very difficult time in his own life. And he was right. I hit a rock bottom and I, I couldn't train. I couldn't fight. My dad passed and my friend passed. There was a couple of times that I just didn't want to be here anymore. Yeah. Mm. And you know, I still deal with that stuff daily. So if you're facing a bully or being criticized by a random stranger or internet troll, you can prevent yourself from reacting with anger by understanding that they're probably going through a tough time in their own life and just taking their frustration out on you. Even if they get personal, it's really not personal. They would have done the same to anyone else. If he does beat you, have you thought about what you do? Enjoy being a billionaire, married to a supermodel, and become WWE champion, and run a podcast that's number one in the world, sign athletes to prime repeatedly, go live on a farm, smile every single day of my life, have kids, raise a family, be happy forever. The excessive trash talk did put Logan in a difficult spot though. Not many people condone Dylan's trash talk methods, but everyone was in agreement that now Logan had to beat Dylan. If he lost, it would not only be embarrassing to lose the fight in general, but his reputation and his wife would remain disrespected, Dylan would be validated and likely continue bullying, and the humiliation for the rest of his life would be unbearable. At least that's what you would think from the outside looking in. But through some reflection, Logan realized that even if he lost, although it would be embarrassing and painful in the moment, life would move on, and this wouldn't affect him from thriving in his own adventures. This is a great practice to do when you're super nervous about a situation or feel like you have to achieve a certain outcome. Consider the worst case scenario. What would happen if your worst fear came true? If you're still alive and get to continue doing what you do, it's probably not that big of a deal. A lot of times, our fears are bigger in our own head than in real life. Guys, Dylan Dennis lives on the internet. I think he really just doesn't want to get knocked out. This fear of embarrassment was probably the reason that Dylan didn't throw many punches. Apparently, he only landed 15 punches to Logan's 100. It seemed like he was more scared of losing and being made a meme on Twitter than actually winning the fight, which prevented him from taking risks and actually giving his best. If he would have done the worst case scenario exercise, he might have realized that losing wouldn't have been all that bad. And that might have gave him the confidence to go for the win. He has made it so personal. And how do you not go in there wanting to murder this human being? And the answer is, uh, I forgive him. I forgive Dylan. This was how Logan was able to get into Zen mode. If you notice during the fight, he didn't come out punching repeatedly with anger like many people expected him to do. And he probably intended to do that when he first started preparing for the fight. But as an experienced athlete, he knew that if he fought with anger, he wouldn't fight well and wouldn't follow his game plan. To avoid this, he forgave Dylan. That's very tough to do but it was necessary for him to fight without emotion and execute to the best of his ability. When you're angry, you literally can't think straight. He wouldn't have been sticking to his strategy. He might have tired himself out and could have exposed himself to getting KO'd if he just went full on attack. He forgave Dylan so that he would refrain from using the match to fulfill his personal vendetta against the guy and refocus on his job, which was winning the fight. He went on to put on an absolute clinic where he dominated Dylan every round and didn't let him get off any significant punches. He didn't get the knockout like he hoped, but he got the job done and won the fight. And I want to give a thanks to the most important woman in my life, next to my mother, of course. My beautiful fiance. Baby, I love you so much from my heart and soul. I can't wait to start a family with you, live the rest of my life with you. The one person who was getting the worst of Logan's trash talk was Logan's fiance, Nina. Now, although it was likely horrible to deal with behind closed doors, Dylan unknowingly gave Logan an extremely powerful motivator for the fight beyond wanting to win the fight just because. Logan now had a strong reason why he wanted to win the fight. He had to get redemption for his fiance and also use Dylan as an example of what happens to internet trolls. Before, Logan knew Dylan wasn't much of a match boxing-wise and probably would have taken the preparation a bit easy. But with this clear and strong reason why he wanted to win the fight, I bet this was the hardest Logan has worked in preparation for a competition despite this being his worst opponent. Meanwhile, Dylan's reason for taking the fight... Obviously money which is a poor motivator because money is external motivation, which will always be weaker than Logan's internal motivation of wanting to win the fight for a personal reason. Sometimes the devil will make his way into your life. 
He will try to break you down spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally, but you rely on your support system. You believe in yourself and your character. You trust the people around you and you be resilient. Let's go. And no amount of darkness can overtake you, I promise. A strong support system is the only way Logan was able to get through this. He leaned on his friends and family for support. And while the world might have been clowning him, his friends and family still loved him the same as before. If you're experiencing bullying online, get off social media and go out in the real world. Then and only then will you realize how fake that stuff really is. Trust in your own character and that good will prevail over evil. I think maybe the fans coming on my side and rooting for me. Since Dylan lives on Twitter and social media, it looks like he gets his validation from other people. You know, made that face to face so easy for Logan, bro. <laughs> Come on, I son. want it. Look at the comments. He reads the comments on social media and gained confidence from them while the public was on his side. But it's very dangerous and toxic to care more about what people think of you than what you think of yourself. Because if you give people the power to tell you that you're worthy, you also give people the power to tell you that you're not. And Dylan will likely experience the detrimental effects of this in these next few months. But that's why I think he won the fight. Why do you think he won the fight?